Praise God. Good evening. Good evening. Nobody's saying nothing, huh? One person. Good evening. Good evening. Praise be to the Father. I I gotta say a word there. That's fine with me too. Let's go before the Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your, your compassion for dealing with us. Thank you. We thank you, Father God, for your for all that you've done up to this point. And we believe, Holy Spirit, that we take this new adventure into your word. <laughs> you are going to show us the true meaning of repentance. And we believe, Father God, that that truth will be unlocked this night and the people will grab hold to it and they'll run with it to serve you. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this night. And we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of tonight's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. A few years ago, I did uh, a teaching on the true essence of repentance. And because of different things that has happened over the past several weeks, in my own life, with me, <laughs> as well as with other people that I'm dealing with, you know, through my personal life and business life, and yada, 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 yada. The Spirit of God has unctioned me to go down this path road tonight. And if you listen, are y'all out there? Y'all in here too? <laughs> Everybody else who will hear this message. If you listen with a, a pure heart, you'll be, you'll be blessed by it. You'll be blessed by it. Because uh, we we try we try to not change the good in people. Not, well, some people think when Jesus came, he tried to make bad people good, and that was not the case. What he did was come to offer himself for as a sacrifice so that all can become like him, whether good or bad. Jesus even said it himself. He said he did not come to call the righteous to repentance, but the unrighteous. And the book of Romans tells us that God counted everybody as unrighteous. <laughs> everybody. Um, and, it's, uh, and I know I'm kind of right on the right track with this, like yesterday on my job, I said some stuff that I know I shouldn't have asked. You know how it is, you be in, in a conversation, and then the moment you say something, sit up. If we not at home, sit up. All y'all out there laying down. This is this is church. Sit up. Sit up. So, like we're sitting, like I was far so rudely interrupted. We laying around like this is. Really? I said some stuff. I'm shot the whole thing. I said stuff. And the moment I said it, it was like the light bulb went on. And I tried to almost justify saying, but Lord, it was anatomically correct. I used the correct words and yada, yada, yada. And it just was gnawing at me. And so right now, I'm putting myself on front street. Putting myself on front street. I repented to the Lord. Now I'm repenting to all of y'all. Everybody here and everybody out there. You're going to say something. It wasn't any profanity. So you know, all me out there, some of y'all like, that's a custom. No. <laughs> it's just that the Holy Spirit said those words were not necessarily appropriate. You, you, you follow me? We all get caught up in those situations <clears throat> where you say certain things or you do certain things. And I know some of y'all out there trying to figure out what I said. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit, as soon as you say it, 
the Holy Spirit would literally, if your heart is right toward God, the Holy Spirit will show you your flaw immediately. Now Satan, on the back end of that, he'll jump in your ear and he'll be he'll nag you to, to try to nag you to death. See, you gonna be a believer. Yeah, you shouldn't have said that. How you call yourself a Christian? That, 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 that's that boy. That's that boy. And you know what's funny about it? I was just having a conversation with another believer, and uh, somebody uh, we were discussing it was like we was talking about getting to the point to where you don't commit sin at all. That is possible now. Now, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm learning to get to that point to where I'm experiencing because the Bible does tell us. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So right now we are talking on the lines of faith, calling those things that be not as though they were. Because eventually, when we go be with the Father, and we be in for eternity, who won't come in sin? Ain't gonna mean you gonna have to go to the Father and say, Father God, will you please forgive me? Some of us might do that on the front end <laughs> when we first get to him. Oh Lord, Jim, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've made jokes about that, but I taught on the true essence of repentance, and I want to take you all in scripture, take you all in scripture, and go to the book of, uh, oh Lord, where is it at? I just had it, I just had it, my notes. There you go, Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Oh Lord, here we go. I was doing it. Just fine. You know how you do read and you do just fine, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh well, well. Matthew chapter 12. Oh, look what it says in verse, let me go start at verse 32. Look what it says. Whoso, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven of him either in this age or in the age to come, or the world that we live in now, or in the world that is going to come. If you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, this should answer some questions right now. If you blaspheme again, if you say Jesus did something and he didn't really do it, and you lie on Jesus, God will forgive you for that. But you can't lie on the Holy Ghost. So how do you know it's the Holy Ghost? A lot of people don't even know who the Holy Ghost is. We've been teaching on that on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. What's this got to do with repentance? Well, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit, he's the one that comes on the inside of you, and he is the one who performs the work of salvation. You get born again, now he's on the inside of you. What did I just say? Repeat that to me. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. is the one. Yes. That's one person that is speaking. All these people in hell. The Holy, Spirit the Holy Spirit is the person, is person. who comes on the inside, and he is the one who performs salvation. He's the one who connects you back to God. Still, only three people are in hell. All the people are in only two of them speaking. Really? See? Okay, well, I'm not going to deal with that right now. And that's your pride right now. Hopefully, we're going we to rectify that here in a second. So what he said, if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, okay. it will not be forgiven you now or in the age to come. Why? Because he's the one who performs salvation. He's the one doing that. But look what he says. Look what he says in uh, verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. What is he talking about? He's referring to the, the specific type of tree. Only way you'll know a specific type of tree if you go down to the root of the tree or you get to the seed that the tree was planted from. That tree or whatever kind of garden or vegetable that you might have, you can take an apple seed and you plant it in the ground, eventually over a period of time, apple, a tree, apple tree is gonna grow up and then apples are gonna be produced off of that tree. It's the same way it is. Whatever kind of seed, look what it said. Either make the tree, either make the tree good, 
and then its fruit will be good. Jesus was specifically talking right back at the fruit of people or the nature of people. That's what God came back to reestablish through Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, when he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost, you at that time, when you get born again, with them at that time, when you now when you get born again, you are now casting off that old nature, and you are now taking on the nature of God. Thus, therefore, you were producing bad fruits before. Now you can produce good fruits. Why? Because your nature has been changed. That's why he says, for the tree is known by its what? Fruit. 34. You brood of vipers, how can you be an evil speak what is good? Oh, gee, where you get all this stuff from? You just can't write that for For the mouth speaks out of what that fills the heart. The, I mean, the good man brings for, brings out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. He's still talking about the nature of a person. If you have not received Jesus Christ your Lord, if you have not received the Holy Ghost to help you change that old nature, get rid of it, and take on this new nature, mm -hmm. He said, you're going to still produce old fruits. You're going to still produce evil things. Watch this. Look what it said in verse 36. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For you, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So now he's still talking about salvation, 101, getting born again, receiving this new nature of God. 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 I thought we were talking about repentance. We are. Because once you realize that you have put off that old man and you've received this new nature in Christ Jesus, you won't want to commit sin. <clears throat> I'm not saying that you won't be tempted to commit sin. What I am saying is that you won't want to do it. Opportunities will present itself to commit sin. Like, an like me, last night, it's just a slip of some words. I mean, I was making an, uh, an analogy about some different things, and all of a sudden, I said it. And I said, oh, Lord. So well, you know, Lord, no. Immediately, I repented. And instead of sitting there playing the games with it, immediately, I repented. I repented. <coughs> Why? Because my nature has been changed. My nature has been changed. Watch, watch this. Watch this. I want you to go. I don't know what it is. It was, you know. What you doing? Got to be kidding me. I want y'all to turn to 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Good thing I know the scriptures, man. I know. Second Corinthians chapter 7. Okay. Here is Paul. Give you the outline behind it. Here's Paul talking to a specific group of people in the Corinthian church. And they was li they was living the same life. I want you, they was, and they was on the road. I mean on the road. They was taking care of business, going to going to school, going to work, you know, in an everyday family life going through, you know, some of them might have been just going through the motion, some of them fervently on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at this. Look at this, what he did. Look at verse 4. It says, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. 
For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we troubled on every side, where with fighting within fears. Notice how he, I'm talking about all the different situations that you're going to have encounter. You're going to have different situations that's going to encounter for you to want to go back and commit sin. Look what it says. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. Notice he said, even when we were in a tough situation, as soon as I saw Titus, his brother in Christ, coming to see about him, some of us, some of you all do that right now. Wow. You go see something about your people out there. Yeah. You become that refresher mm -hmm. to get them lifted up to where they don't go back into sin. Mm -hmm. Look what it says. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation where he was comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. Here Titus is talking about somebody else who he was talking to, and they were, he was rejoiced even more because he says, those people really, truly have repented. Watch this. Verse 8. For though I made ye sorrow with a letter. Uh-oh. Hold your finger right there. For though I made you sorrow with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle or letter hath made ye sorrow, though it were but for a season. What's going on here? Paul wrote a letter to those people. He heard about them going back off into sin. And he says, Jesus even said, he said, you're a brood of vipers. Ha! You ain't changed your nature. And yet, at the same time, you try to produce good fruit. He says, change your nature, and the fruit is can't, the fruit will come out of the nature. Oh, Lord Jesus. See this repentance? He said, that Repent. He wrote a letter to them, and I'll venture to say, he obviously got in a case. And these people, they realized what was going on, and they said, how is it that we say we are believers in Christ, and yet we are producing bad fruits? I mean, we're producing good fruit. We, we, I mean, produce some bad fruit, but we believe in Jesus Christ. I said it right first. Time. Believe in Jesus Christ, but all these bad fruits are coming out of us. Which means they had not truly repented just yet. Now I want you to take a moment. I want you to look up, look at this word sorrow. I went and looked it up. The word sorrow in the Greek is lupe. L-U-P-E. It means uh, a pronunciation as low pay. L-O-O-P-A-Y. That's my job, Pastor. <laughs> no, man. There ain't no low pay. <laughs> it's low pay. <laughs> I told you it was in the Bible. <laughs> the ba bad wage is low pay. No, you don't. Right, right. No, the definition is, means it's apparently a primary word for what? Sadness. Mm -hmm. Grief, grievous, grudgingly, heaviness, or sorrow. Heaviness or sorrow. Heaviness or sorrow. So now, God is going still referring back to the intentions of people. How many of y'all ever heard somebody say this? What I said, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I meant it. And you, you, you almost roll your eyes in the back of your head and then get one of them stairs like, like, really? You, you ain't sorry. There is a sorrow. Go back over to Corinthians. We're going to go over to Corinthians. Well, we like, y'all ain't nothing. I went out there for a second. Look what it says. Now, verse 9. Now, I rejoice not that ye were made sorrow, but that ye sorrowed to what? Repentance. Some people, sorry, they got caught. Some people, sorry, because they, they, uh, 
end up hurting somebody's feelings and they didn't really want their feelings hurt. They was trying to get certain things done. Now, when you sorrow, you repent. The word repent means to change. Stop doing what you were doing. <clears throat> Ask God to forgive you, and then you change. Why? He says, ye sorrow to repentance, for ye were made sorrow after a God, sorry after a godly um, good man, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this out of the Good News Version. I mean, uh, what is, what is that? Come on, what are you doing? Go read this out of uh, the NSB version. The NSB version. It says this, verse, thir verse 12. It says, so, so although I wrote to you, it was not for the sake of the offender, nor for the sake of one offended, but that your earnestness on our behalf might be made to you. Oh, Lord, what am I at? Thank you, uh, I jumped way too far ahead. No, no, go back on verse 9. <laughs> oh. I want to drop down to verse 12. Now, I rejoice not. That's good, too, though. Now, I rejoice not that ye were made sorrow, but that ye that were your made. Oh, Lord. Now, I rejoice not that you were made sorrowful, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God. Notice how I say it. The Holy Spirit jumped on me and said, you need to repent now. Don't try to justify what you said. Don't try to do, go back and cover it up. Don't. Ask me for forgiveness now and change. Why do you think Jesus made the statement? He says, every idle word or careless word. I'm going to read, I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read that, Matthew. What is it? What is it, Matthew? I just had it. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Come on, what do you know, what do you know, what do you know? Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. I'm going to read out the NSV version Bible. It. it says it like this. But I'll tell you that every careless word, every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. Careless word, careless word, every careless word, every careless word. When you say, I'm sorrow, sorry, and you didn't mean it, that's an idle word. It's a useless word. Why? Because your intentions ain't for you actually sorry, you're going to change. You're trying to cover something up. So what are we talking about so far? Repentance. True essence of repentance. When you sorrow, you ain't going back to do that stuff anymore. I tell people all the time, I say, man, it's been 16 years since I quit smoking. And I ain't, I, I quit. Well, don't never say never. No, I ain't going back. I repented. I ain't going back. Well, you, you, you don't know. Yeah, I do. I ain't going back. I repented from that stuff. And I'm working on repenting on other things now in my life, too. Like my words, got you got. I got to keep my words right. I believe in God for certain things. I can't be out there just spewing out careless words all over the place and useless words and pointless words and words that ain't gonna be, produce anything. So I just can't be putting those words out there. That's why he says every careless word. Go back over there to Second Corinthians. Go back on Second Corinthians because we almost do here. Almost do here. What was it? Second Corinthians chapter what? Seven. Eight. Oh, oh, eight. Seven. What are you talking yeah. about? Look what he says. Seven, right. He says, uh, verse 10. 
Verse 10. I'm going to go back over and read uh, King James again. He said, For godly sorrow work with repentance. For godly sorrow work with repentance to what? Salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work of death. The sorrow of the world work of what? Death. death. When people well, let's deal with God first before we even deal with people. In the book of Psalms, King David says, he says, if I lay my bed in Sheol, which is in hell, he said, you are there. If I lay my bed in heaven, you're there. If I lay my head anywhere on this earth, you're there. He says, you know my inner parts better than I know them. So, you can't hide nothing from God on the contrary of what people may believe. You can't hide nothing from God. That was one of the things when God, King David, he got one of the testimonies that God, he was a, um, a man after God's own heart. God said that about him. Why? Because David, he'd go out, he made David went out and he was a big time mafia the Costa Nostro brother and had a man killed because he took the man's wife even though the man only had one good thing but and besides serving you king and then and saying uh, uh, had, had his wife and David took his wife and ended up getting her pregnant and then tried to cover it up and had a man killed uh, in, in the field of battle and God Nathan the prophet picked up on that Nathan the prophet represented the Holy Spirit at that time and he showed up to David, gave David uh, uh, an analogy, a story, a parable. And, get, and King David said, who is the man who did this thing? And Nathan said, you did. King David didn't hesitate. He dropped on his face and he said, I am sorry, sorry. Please forgive me. Lord, please. Now, I remember when I returned, when I returned, I returned back my life over the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, that light bulb hit on me, and I, I just started crying. I, I went on, I, me, and, me and my wife, we was, uh, had been married only a few short years. And I remember go, we lived in a, a duplex, we lived in a duplex, and I, we love on stage on the top floor. And I can remember, I can't, uh, that, whole, that, that revelation hit me about 1230 at night. I was in the green and go to sleep because I get them to go work the next morning. I went on down. I said, man, oh, Lord, Jesus started snotting and crying. She said, what's wrong? I said, I'll be back. I went on downstairs. I think I recorded Romans 10, 9, and 10 about 15 times that night, that night. And then the next night, it was another 12 more. And then the next night, it was another 8 more. And then I think that went on for about a month. And God let me do it. I, was, I can't remember any time during the course of that when God said, Okay, you've done enough. He let me repent. He said, I, I, I was like, Lord, I'm sorry. For, I had one of the big blanket prayers. Lord, I am sorry for everything I've been doing wrong. <laughs> Nature changed. And here Paul is saying, I know I made you sorry, but it was according to the will of God that you actually realize what you were doing is wrong and you need to now change. Glory to God. I know somebody getting somebody this one's nightmare. You need why? Because well, well, look at the life everybody's going down. Look what people doing on the job. They trying to figure out a way to connive and backstab and hide and you know, you know, sex is running rampage all over the place. People mutilating their bodies with different things, and you know they, they can't. They don't even want to eat properly anymore. And they they people they they run to the gym and they exercise and they turn around and smoke a pack of cigarettes. It's like I said, I said, okay, and, and, and you may they, they they call it free. I was talking to the uh, lady. And I'm not going to tell y'all where she's from because everybody might, you might pick up on where she's from. And she's, but she's from another country and she's only been here in America not too long. And she says, she, cause she saw me praying over my food. And she said, do you pray over your food every time? I said, yeah, every time. I was like, just about to remember. Even if I make the food or somebody else makes it, I pray over my food every time. She said, America, so free, just free. She said, 
in her country, she said, hey, Muslim? You Muslim? You Muslim. But you Christian? They kill you. <laughs> she said, but they pray, and they're Muslim, and they pray all day long, and as soon as they get through praying, they get up and they go shoot and kill each other. <laughs> and I said, she said, but in America, she said, in America, she said, you said, you Muslim God? Okay. You Hindu God? Okay. You Christian God? Okay. If you know God, okay too. <laughs> Had me all rolling, but people, it's like she the, the essence, the essence of repentance, it has been, for some reason, it has been lost. People refuse to change to help somebody else, and, and it's going to benefit you in the long run. It's going to benefit you in the long run. I was talking to my wife just last night. I said, oh, it was last night. Last night? Yeah, yeah, well, yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon. I'm going last night. <laughs> Time go back quick now. Yesterday afternoon. And I said, it it's like, how is it that a man who's married to a woman, or vice versa, they can look the person in the eye and say, I love you, and do married things, and then 28 hours later, be looking at another woman that they ain't married to and say, I love you, and do the same thing that they were doing day wise. Said, How can you mask that? It's like, every time I, if I even look at another woman, literally every time I even look at, I don't even be thinking, I'll be just talking to the people you know, on the job, and I see Denise. And I say, thank you, Lord, for that. I, I, I love that. And I gotta remember that I'm talking to the person on the job or something when we call them my wife, but you know, and they're like, Denise, right there, my face. I'm like, thank God, I say all the time, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for Denise. Be singing one of them love songs. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Denise. Why? Repentance. There's no right, there's no real reason why. No, oh Lord, I, I, there's no real reason why you would want to continue on hurting. Somebody else. True repentance. True repentance. Let, let, let's finish this up. Let's finish this up. Let's finish this up. Second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter, chapter uh, seven. Look what it says. From verse, uh, verse, verse ten. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces repentance with regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. Verse 11. For behold, what earnestness this very thing, this godly sorrow, has produced in you. What vindication of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what avenging of wrong. In everything you demonstrated yourselves to be innocent in the matter. Why? You did it, you know you did it, and you saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I, Lord, I accept the penalty that Jesus Christ paid for my sin, and he also paid for that sin too. Will you please forgive me? Now, show me, help me, guide me to not do that again. I don't want to do that again. One, it displeases you. Two, it's going to hurt my fellow brothers and sisters. Show me how not to do that again. I don't want to go back to that again. And God will walk you through it. The Holy Spirit will pick up on that, and he'll start walking you down that path of true essence, of the true. Not this fake God. So I know, what about, what did we just read? We just read, he says, the godly sorrow of the world produces death. Why? Because eventually, your lie gonna catch up to you. Eventually, something is gonna happen that's gonna cause you to be in a situation to where you're gonna have to either confess what you did wrong or tell another lie. Or you're gonna go try to go get, and you're gonna go get uh, a big time lawyer, you're gonna go get Johnny Cochran to keep you from going to jail. 
or you're going to get some other kind of big time lawyer that's going to keep you from getting a whole bunch of trouble and they're going to do some trick lawyering and this and that. No, you did it. You can't hide it from God. And then people want to say this, only God can judge me. You're right. Because Jesus said to himself, every idle word, you will give an account of in the day of judgment. Well, I can repent in my heart, and I can still do some trick lawyering to keep me from going to jail. You go right on ahead. You play that card, I, I, that's going to be between you and God. I'm, in, I'm not going down that road. I'm not going down that road. So now you all understand what the true meaning of repentance really is. The true meaning. Change. What is repentance? Change. What is repentance? Change. How do you change? Receive that new nature and allow God to walk you in that new nature so that the old nature can die. Praise God. Lord, I'm so sorry for everything I've done wrong against you and against my fellow man and every idle word that I've spoken. I put myself on front street here on behalf of the people. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Remember, continue to learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. I'll see y'all next time.